Hello everyone and welcome to Madden Science. Today's edition is covering Newton's third law. We're focusing mostly on the concept. Now you can see Newton's third law on the bottom. Also got my face up in the corner. The law says all forces occur in pairs and these two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. We're going to take a look at the law, kind of breaking it in two looking at the equal and magnitude opposite and direction portion and also action reaction pairs and the fact that they act on different objects. We're going to take a look at a number of movies, some of the stuff we did in lab, others from actual movies, and probably none better than the movie Gravity to look at and think about and experience Newton's third law and probably all of Newton's laws for that matter. Here's a good set of labeled action-reaction pairs. You can see the force down in the red vector and the opposite force is equal, opposite direction in blue. We're labeling the bottom one the force of Earth on the ball, so E on B, and labeling the top one the force of the ball on Earth. This can work in boxing too, where you could see the force of the glove on the dude's face and the force of the face on the glove. Now whether that be Rocky punching some dude, training for Drago. So yeah, whether it's a bunch of goofballs in the gym or Rocky Balboa, you can see those same action-reaction pairs shown with vectors of red and vectors of blue. We can peek back into our book, Chapter 7, the big idea. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. One of our homework pages from the concept development goes into Newton's third law. Maybe we can focus on that middle one. Head bumps ball and... And here, Robin Van Persie head hits ball, and ball hits head, and goalie doesn't do much. Take a look, here's LeBron, force of the ball on the hand, force of the hand on the ball. And LeBron loves Newton's third law so much, he even made a Khan Academy video all about it. Newton's third law tells us that for every action there's always an equal and opposite Back in our book, we can see four different examples with a car and tires, a rocket, a spring, Galileo dropping balls from the Leaning Tower of Pizza. You can also see revealed the reaction forces, so action and reaction. Tire pushes on road, road pushes on tire, gas pushes on rocket spring pulls on man, and ball pulls on earth. Take a look at this hammer and nail. Clearly the hammer has a lot of force, so there's the force of the hammer on the nail, but also the nail has a force on the hammer, as the hammer experiences a severe negative acceleration or deceleration upon impact. Take a look at this funny dude in a ghost costume on a skateboard. The person can push against the wall, and the wall will push back. Now consider if you push even harder on the wall, the wall will push even harder on you. Same thing works for a sledgehammer. You can have the sledgehammer pushing against the tire and the tire pushing against the sledgehammer.
And this works really well with sports here with one of my favorite players, Roger Federer. You can see the force of the racket on the ball and the force of the ball on the racket. Let's take a look at some live time tennis. Examples of the force of the tennis racket on the ball and the ball on the tennis racket. Obviously here, the slight mass of the tennis ball and the greater mass behind the tennis racket make quite a difference in the acceleration. You'll note some similar things here with action-reaction pairs and stand-up paddle boarding. This time it's the force of the paddle on water and the force of the water on the paddle. And really it's trying to manipulate the force of the paddle against the water and therefore how hard the water pushes against the paddle and thus the rider and the board. Hello everybody. Welcome to Green Lake. Middle of winter. It's February 13th, so happy birthday to my nephew Pato. We're sharing the lake today with the folks from Green Lake crew. You can see them in the back on their boats. Today we're going to use a stand-up paddle board to help us learn about Newton's third law. For every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. What's cool with stand-up paddle boarding is it allows us to look at the role of the net force and really the angles involved, kind of like what we saw with our ghost dude on a skateboard. You can see kind of what is the role of the net force or what is the direction, which way is the wind blowing, is there a current, you can paddle wider, narrower, you can see it here with some angles, where do you want the craft to go? Let's take a look at this video. This concept of trying to manipulate the reaction force, in this case, the way in which the water pushes on the paddle, is kind of what you see in the movie Gravity, except way cooler when Sandra Bullock is trying to manipulate the force of the extinguisher on the gas and the gas on the extinguisher and thus her body. Let's take a look at that video. The force of the gas on the extinguisher is what is propelling her in space. Hopefully she's got it aimed right at her center of gravity, otherwise she'll be spinning all over the place. Okay, so maybe we're not going to do anything as cool as go on a spacewalk, but we do have lots of lab experience that we want to remember as we're thinking about Newton's third law. We put these ingredients together, vinegar and baking soda, so that we could explode and make a soda bottle rocket. <laughs> and of course, don't forget the balloon races across the sky where you had the force of the balloon on the air and the force of the air on the balloon, which the force on the balloon is what propelled it across a string and across the room. Set, go. No, nice. no. All right, and let's not forget about what happened when we took the five gallon water bottle, filled it up with some ethanol and lit it on fire. And now, some slow mo. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And we can see that our same rules apply from Newton's third law, where we can label action and reaction forces. Brings us to a question. If a Mack truck and a Volkswagen have a head-on collision, which vehicle experiences the greater impact force? 
We're reminded of Newton's third law, which says these two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So we can take our same question, but this time it's a big old 18 wheeler and a little old bug or a fly. We can look at the way in which this works in a similar fashion with the earth and the moon. The force of the moon on earth and the force of earth on the moon and the idea of cause and effect. I want to look back to Newton's second law and think of our net force as the cause and the effect of that, the effect of that net force on a mass being the acceleration shown here in its formula. So back to our good example with the bug. So a truck and a fly each has the same force. So our cause is a net force. In this case, the force of the truck and the force of the bug being equal. We then divide that by their masses. This is not to scale, but you can imagine that the force on the big old massive truck and the same exact force on a little old tiny bug whose mass is significantly small. Can here shown just with the different size m's. Those same forces on different masses result in different accelerations. A much smaller, almost negligible acceleration for the truck and a gigantic, probably uh, resulting in death, acceleration for the little bug. This is what you're seeing with the Earth and the Moon. This idea brought to us from our friends at Veritasium and shown out in really the same idea where the Moon has a significantly smaller mass than the Earth and so the acceleration that the Earth feels is much less than the acceleration that the Moon feels. This too is seen with the ball. When the ball is dropped, the Earth does move towards the ball, but not a whole lot. Brings us to our next question. In order to understand this somewhat tricky horse and cart question, we need to look at net forces. We need to understand action and reaction pairs as acting on different objects. And what better way to do this than go back to the movies? Let's start by taking a look at the helicopters in Apocalypse Now. Earlier we had mentioned that action-reaction pairs act on different objects. And a helicopter is a really good example. How is it that a helicopter can hover? And how is it that it can fly? We want to take a look carefully at net force once again and the forces that act on a helicopter. In order to do that, though, we want to first take a look at what are all of the forces involved in this scene. Let's first start with the weight of the helicopter. The weight of the helicopter is pointed down, and really we can call that the force of the Earth on the helicopter, or E on H. And the action-reaction pair for that will be pointing up in the same size, and we'll call that the force of the helicopter on Earth. The second set of forces that we're going to see here, at least the ones that are important to us today, are going to be the force of the blade on the air, it's the force of B on A, in acting opposite of that, we're going to find the force of the air on blade. Now with these different sets of action-reaction pairs, it's probably good to look at what is acting directly on the helicopter. So for that we want to see this top force is force of air on blade. Okay. The blade is part of the helicopter, so that'll work. And then we've got the force of Earth on the helicopter, shown down here. So now that we've highlighted the forces that do matter, which again is the force of the air on the blade, we don't care about the blade on the air for now. 
because it's not acting on the helicopter, and the force of the earth on the helicopter, and we're not going to care much about the force of the helicopter on earth. These two forces are the two that we're looking at when we want to calculate the net force and determine whether or not we're moving up. Peek back at just these forces and we can take a good look at Newton's second law which says acceleration is our net force over mass. And our net force in this case is the force of the air on blade up and the force of the earth on helicopter down. Your net force is the force of air on the blade plus the force of earth on helicopter. But since we're going to say that the force of the earth on helicopter is negative, we can go ahead and erase that and just put in a negative sign. Now, when the two are equal, you have a net force of zero, and when the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. So that's a helicopter that is either hovering or at a constant velocity. You can imagine if the force of the air on the blade goes up, then the helicopter would accelerate up. When the force of the earth on the helicopter goes up, or the force of the air on blade goes down, the net force would be pointed down and the acceleration would also be pointed down. Once again, we're reminded that action-reaction pairs act on different objects. Let's try and see if we can answer this horse and cart question by looking at another movie. Aha! Ben-Hur and the chariot races. We want to approach this problem with the horse and the chariot much like we did with the helicopter, except this one is turned horizontal instead of vertical. So you got two different sets of action-reaction pairs. Kind of down here you'd have the horse and its force against the ground pushed back by the force of the ground against the horse. And then in a little bit tighter you'd have the force of the chariot on the horse and the force of the horse on the chariot. Let's maybe take a little peek at this a little bit bigger and a little bit clearer so we can see these forces in detail. Alas, we've got our unicorn Pegasus pulling a chariot. Let's zoom in to see what's happening near its feet for action-reaction pairs pushing as hard as it can off of the ground, you're going to have our first force. So the force of the horse pushing on the ground. The action-reaction pair for that here in red is going to be the force of the ground on the horse. If we look up towards the chariot, we're going to see something similar in that the chariot will pull on the horse. So the force of the chariot on horse countered by the force of the horse on the chariot. Zooming out a little bit, we can see indeed there are two different forces that act on the horse. You can see those highlighted here in blue. Force of the chariot on the horse and the force of the ground on the horse. And those two are going to be the forces that contribute to the net force acting on the horse. So simply put, if we take a look at the force of 
the ground on horse versus the force of the chariot on horse. If the ground on horse is greater, then the horse will accelerate to the left. If the force of the chariot on the horse is greater, the horse will accelerate to the right. Recall also that if they are even, if these two cancel out, then we're going to see a net force of zero. And with a net force of zero, we're going to have either a horse at rest or this unicorn pegasus horse in constant velocity. Oh, wow. And so there you have it. Newton's third law. Horses, helicopters, net force, action-reaction pairs. And as this beautiful picture of Pope Francis reminds us, you can't touch without being touched. <laughs>